The following KQED production was produced in high definition. Every single bite needed to be savored. <laughs> There's Twinkies in there. Wow. It's like a great big hug in the cold city. I mean, that food is about as spicy as I can handle, and okay. my parents put chili powder in my baby food. Like. <laughs> and I sent french fry bits everywhere all over the table and just a lot of chewing and... <laughs> okay, my stomach is growling right now. I just want you to know I'm hungry. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check, Please! Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. We have three guests, and each one recommends one of their favorite spots, and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This week, we have a vegetarian-friendly show. Football coach and CEO Mike DiMaria runs an orthopedic medical device company. He cinches himself up as he braces for new adventures in eating. As a vegetarian, he's all about supporting good food and wine. And financial advisor Kathy Curtis's motto is never to eat bad food. She's so committed to this end that she investigates any restaurant before venturing inside. She even volunteers her free time to plan food and wine programs for a local organization. But first, research scientist Suzanne Angeli theorizes on the perfect meal and investigates eateries searching for all the elements to make it. As a vegetarian looking for new taste sensations, she's found her eco-friendly spot serving innovative South Indian fare. It's on Fillmore in San Francisco and it's called Dosa. I'm Anjan Mitra, and my restaurant is Dosa. And we have two locations in San Francisco, one on Fillmore and one on Valencia Street. I grew up in Bombay, but there are about a million South Indians who live in, in Bombay. So a lot of these recipes come from my friends, my, my chef's families, my family, and so on. So these are all like home-cooked recipes. A lot of them are very, very traditional approaches to these dishes. Sometimes we modify them a little bit. We use local ingredients. My name is Emily Mitra and I co-own Dosa Restaurants with my husband Anjan Mitra. So in building a restaurant, what we were inspired to do was really bring the colors from the palette of South Indian cuisine. We wanted to bring uh, artwork and photography that was inspired by India. And we wanted to do an entirely green build out, which is what we did at this location, Dosa on Fillmore. Dosa is a very uniquely San Francisco restaurant in the sense that we focus on Southern Indian food. We use a lot of organic and sustainable ingredients, which is very unique for an Indian restaurant. And we uh, are also the only Southern Indian restaurant uh, in the Bay Area that serves non-vegetarian dishes. We also have a very strong bar program that incorporates a lot of the spices that we use in our food. And we have a wine list that's obviously tailored to our cuisine. So Suzanne, I, this place focuses on South Indian cuisine, Southern Indian cuisine, right. doesn't it? Right. So it's pretty unique compared to your Northern Indian cuisine or Pakistani. So a lot of people are familiar with their favorite curries or tandoori's, but um, dosa is Southern Indian, and so it has unique flavors that are specific. And on um, the namesake dosa, it has dosas, which are which are my favorite dish. Sort of like crepes, like little yes. pancake crepes. So they're yeah. thin, crispy um, crepes. They're made of fermented. Um, lentils and rice and they're crispy and they usually come with a potato mm. filling which um, is the dosa sort of wraps over it and it's served with um, some dipping sauces um, a sambar a spicy lentil soup Right, um, their sambar. They're certainly known for this sambar that you can eat like a soup, but oh, you yeah. can dip and uh, you know, my favorite. dip your dip your dosa. Yes, your you dip your dosa, <laughs> and it also has a green coconut chutney mm -hmm. and um, a tomato chutney. And so now, you did can. Did you have the dosas? I when did. You I had a samosa. The spring mm -hmm. samosa is that the same as the dosa? It's different. Samosa is okay. different than a dosa. It's different. Yeah, and I really enjoyed it. it the, the vegetables were real crispy and perfect. But well, how is it different? I. Yeah. Well, the samosas, I guess, are the sort of a pocket um, versus the dosa is is the sort of a big, long, crispy pancake. Oh, right. Okay. That, yeah. Right. And what yeah. did you have when you went, Mike? We had the uh, Veda Paz, which was a slider, but it wasn't the typical slider with with meat in it, and uh, and it had a dipping sauce, 
and it was part sauce, and then they called it gunpowder. It was right. a powder that you dip into it. So we, we poured the whole thing together, slop it all over the uh, slider there, and uh, <laughs> I wound up having to have two drinks <laughs> because uh, I had to uh, use the first one to exhaust the flames from the, uh, from the better pause. But we yeah. also had the, uh, the as you said, the, the fold over. Uh, the dosa. Yeah, and, and it was the onion one where it was infused into the, uh, okay. into the batter, and it was delicious. Does anyone have any salads? Because I, I love do. their salads. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. seasonal as well as being very vegetarian friendly. And so last time we went, we had the watermelon paneer and sprouted mung bean salad. Oh, and it was delicious. amazing. The crunch of the sprouted mung beans with the sweetness of the watermelon and the, the crispiness of the paneer. It was, See, that's yeah. a, I don't think about having a salad at an yeah. Indian place, but I will the next time. But what I love the most was the lamb chops. Mm. Oh mm -hmm. my God, known so for their lamb chops, tender. It was the most expensive dish on the menu, but mm -hmm. we did it anyway and we didn't regret it. They were tender and juicy and really, really nice. Yeah, I brought lots of like my fam brought my parents and my in-laws and you know they're meat eaters and they've also enjoyed it so Open I thought it. the spicing was perfect in every dish yeah. that was my favorite thing about all dishes is that the spice was unique and, right. and obviously really fresh mm -hmm. and, and I think and just they pop. focused on those spices and you brought up cocktails so I want to talk a little bit about cocktails because they use spices and unique flavors in their cocktails mm -hmm. um, so what were what were you drinking because you said you had a couple of them I, <laughs> well I ordered one ginger with I think it was gin. Gin ginger ante Maybe yeah, uh, that was the one. second one I had. What was the first one? The, <laughs> the ginger, batsman? The batsman. The bat yeah. It's like a, yeah. a lemonade iced tea with, with gin. Right. They both they <laughs> both have a ginger flavor to them, and they were delicious. They were very, very good. And atmosphere and parking, you felt comfortable with all that? <clears throat> right around Fairly the Fairly upscale place. Street parking, parking, no mm -hmm. problem. And I think it's like a nightclub. So mm -hmm. it's a great place to go out if you want a, like a night out on the town. There were a lot of couples there, like obviously on their first date, right. and a lot of groups having a lot of fun. So perfect for that. Good to sit at the I, bar uh, if you're mm -hmm. single and, you know. Right. Or, or yeah, I like to go to the bar mm -hmm. sometimes and just have a drink and a dosa. So I think you can go for both yeah. special occasion or since I live nearby, you know, on a, on a Tuesday over. night. Yeah. yeah. Once we got in, it was great. Uh, tables are close together. And the positive side to that is you get you get good interaction there. And people that have been there, they, they tell you what their favorite dishes are. It's kind of loud. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a bit loud. It's and a it bit is loud. big, yeah. If, if you want an intimate space, this isn't probably the place because the ceilings are yeah. very large, mm -hmm. you know. Very big. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, Suzanne, this is your spot. Wrap it up for us. Well, I'd say for a special occasion or if you're just in the neighborhood, it's an amazing value for fine dining and you get to experience unique Southern Indian cuisine. Okay, and Mike? Uh, again, the word is unique. Uh, I think it's just a, a great experience, different from most places you'll go to, and uh, the food was delicious. All right, and Kathy? Um, I'd say perfectly spiced Indian food and a great place to go if you want to feel like you're out on the town. All right, if you would like to try Dosa, it's on Filmer at Post in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-441-3672. It's open for dinner every day with lunch Wednesday through Sunday. Reservations are accepted and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $30. Bread and pasta is made every day at Mike's favorite spot. It's close to his home and the place for his favorite dishes. Known locally as La Piccolo Italia, its menu tours Italy without leaving its location on Burlingame Avenue in Burlingame. And it's called Sapore Italiano Ristorante. <music> My name is Elio, and uh, this is Sapore Italiano. I, I own this restaurant uh, with my three partners, Angelo, Mario, and Massimo. Sapore, or in Italian, means you know, Italian taste. We want to bring you know, the taste of Italy in the peninsula. We make everything from the scratch here. Angelo, he, he makes the best pasta. It's like Italy. Mario, Mario, he got so much creativity in any dish. First of all, all the produce, they are local, from a local market. The chef, four or five times a week, he goes shopping and buy all the vegetables. And also all the other stuff, like oil, tomato, truffle oil, we all import from Italy. 
know, I, I miss my mom cooking from Italy. But, um, you know, Mario and Angelo, they, they've been recreate for me the same dishes. So, you know, very, very similar to my mom cooking. I want to take this opportunity to say thanks to all the customers. A big grazie. Venite a mangiare qua. <laughs>all vegetarian. My favorite dish was my husband's dish. He got the capellini al pomodoro, so mm -hmm. it was the angel hair pasta, and I thought it was well executed with the sweet tomato sauce and the perfectly cooked pasta. I did love the fresh pasta. I had the spinach and ricotta ravioli, um, and again, the pasta was very nice and fresh. I thought the filling was a bit bland, mm -hmm. um, but you know, my husband's dish sort of offset that. Offset that. Now jump in here, Kathy. What what was your experience? Um, the pasta was good. It um it was hot. <laughs> <laughs> I, we, we okay. Had a, well, we had a little issue with the pizza. We ordered a pizza, and it was cold. Oh. And, yeah. And so that was a little bit disappointing. And so when the pasta arrived, we were like, Oh, mm -hmm. good. This is a hot <laughs> dish. And um, it had rock shrimp in it. The rock shrimp tasted fresh. But I can see where this restaurant, you would definitely want to stick with the pasta menu. Yes. And maybe not so much the other. I, I agree. Because um, actually, our appetizer, we had ordered the polenta with mushrooms and gorgonzola, which we were re really looking forward to. And then 15 minutes into our our stay, they told us they were actually, it wasn't available after mm. we had ordered it. So we were really disappointed that right. we didn't get our appetizer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And what did you have for an appetizer? C the carpaccio. Okay. Um, now that's cold, by the way. It was cold. <laughs> and, it's, and it's meat, cold and meat, and so it wasn't a vegetarian, but right. it, it was it was okay, but this is my one little little complaint about that dish was the mustard they served on the side was French's mustard out of the bottle. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So I it that does not go with carpaccio in, right. in my lineup of things. So right. I was a little bit disappointed in that. Is there something else that you would recommend that people try when they go? Um, again, I'm a, a big pasta enthusiast. Then uh, spaghetti alle olio, which is uh, olive oil, garlic, uh, it's just wonderful. Um, they have a vegetarian cicato where it's a, a folded uh, pasta, mm -hmm. flat pasta with a lot of uh, vegetables inside of it, and uh, that's very good also. They serve an antepasto that has just a bunch of wonderful things in it, right. you know. And you mentioned this place is owned by four friends. I mean, mm -hmm. did you get that feel that this is sort of a homestyle spot? How was oh, things yeah. like, uh, you know, how were things like service? I did see the table next to us getting the chef coming out and saying, hey, how are you doing? Unfortunately, I kind of felt my table was being ignored. Mm. Um, I kind of didn't get that that greeting, and right. you know we kind of had some you blunders. You need to go with Mike next yeah, time. Yeah, we kind I of guess. had some <laughs> blunders. We had the appetizer not come. We our waters weren't really being refilled. You know that that similar with me, and I think it's a real insider restaurant. I think we're yeah. on to something here. If you know the owners, it sounds like you've been going there a long time. You probably get primo service, uh, and <laughs> but it, we didn't get that great of service, and so maybe that's what they do. They Pay yeah, to we, the they brought us our check before we mm -hmm. had a uh, chance to order desserts. So we and we had wanted to order dessert. So yeah, yeah. So what did you get for dessert? Speaking um, of dessert, yeah. So dessert, you know, since I didn't have the appetizer, I was sort of still hungry. I wanted some something else. So we got the homemade ice cream um, with hazelnuts and chocolate sauce. And we were really actually disappointed with what showed up because it was I wasn't sort of envisioning this mountain, a scoop of ice cream with 
chocolate sauce labeled right. over it. And we had a sort of a briquettes or little bricks of ice cream that had hardly any chocolate sauce. And um, it was it actually seemed freezer burned, too. Ooh. It didn't seem homemade. Now, Mike's not tackling you yet, so yeah. obviously there's some. So, <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, maybe the ice cream, maybe right. you shouldn't go for the desserts there. Right. But so do you have, I mean, you go all the time. Do you, do you have you heard these experiences before? Or is it no. just, are they, so the no. food is delicious. I know they so make, that, the they make that fresh. I usually get the tiramisu, which is made fresh every day, starting with the espresso that they, yeah. they make in their, uh, there. And, and uh, there are a lot of regulars there. There are a lot of people that go back on a very regular basis. They are known entities, and um, you go back a couple of times and you become part of the family there. You know, usually Massimo and Ilio are the front end uh, managers, and they'll they'll greet you and bring you in and get to know you and uh, give you some wine. Yeah, and right, make right, you right. Part and of take the care of things. Yeah. And and, uh, and there's as I said, there's four owners, so they all want you to have a pleasurable experience right. and. Uh, they're, they're feeding four families out of there, and it's a wonderful story of these four individuals that came over, opened this so restaurant. So next time up, you guys yeah. are going to go with Mike, I can <laughs> yeah. you're going to get the pasta, you're going to forget Absolutely. the dessert, <laughs> yeah. and you're going to go in on the arms of him. Yeah, that's surprising <laughs> you said that about that dessert, because I ordered that one too, and, and they make that fresh there too, you know, yeah. so. Uh -huh. yeah. All right, Mike, this is your spot. Wrap it up for us. Um, Sapori means taste. Uh, the, the chefs there are both culinary trained. Uh, they will cater things to your your wishes, so it is a family place, and uh, it's just uh, it's it's my favorite place. All right, um, I'd say that there's probably lots of other um, Italian restaurants in the Bay Area that I'd prefer to try, so I probably would not make the trek down okay. back to Burlingame. And, and I'd say if you're gonna go there, go to the bar. It was very convivial and warm, and have a glass of wine because they had a fabulous Italian wine list and maybe skip the food. <laughs> okay, if you would like to try Sapore Italiano Ristorante, it's on Burlingame Avenue at El Camino Real in Burlingame. The telephone number is 650-348-3277. It's open for lunch and dinner every day. Reservations are recommended, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $30. Used to be that if wine came in a box or had a screw top, it meant stop, don't drink. Well, today, don't worry. The alternative packaging trend has transformed the wine industry, and you're now seeing high quality wine in all shapes and sizes. Twist offs or screw caps are a top closure for wine, keeping it fresh and vibrant. Boxes like these light, eco friendly wines come in three liter sizes containing four bottles of wine. Some of these boxes cost upwards of $50. Boxes and even bags like this Astro Pouch use technology to prevent air from getting to the wine, keeping it fresh for a month or so. So think inside the box and enjoy. Cheers. Vegetarians and omnivores share equal status with the inspired cuisine at Kathy's Pick. Sustainable ingredients, even at the bar, are gathered locally and presented with care. This eco-friendly spot can be found on Oxford in Berkeley at a place called Gather. My name is Sean Baker. I'm the co-owner and executive chef of Gather Restaurant. Here at Gather Restaurant, we focus on Northern California cuisine. We work with several small farms. One farm grows uh, specialty heirlooms. Um, from different parts of the world that you might not see at your local farmers markets, which makes our food a little bit more personal. With the exception of our ground beef, which we use for our burger, we buy our goats, lambs, young cows, chickens, rabbits, whole. We butcher them in-house. We utilize every single bit of that animal. Here we really embrace root-to-shoot cooking where we are utilizing every single bit of the vegetable, the stalks, the roots, the flowers, the peels. The most inspiration that I get is from farms, seeing what they are doing, how they're doing it, the hard work that they put into it. That's what inspires the style of cooking we do here. So here at Gather, we try to really make sure that everybody at the table is treated with the same thoughtfulness. We want to embrace every dietary preference. We want the vegan to have the same experience as the omnivore. We want the gluten-free person to have the same experience as the lactose intolerant person. And we want people to feel a sense of where, where we live. We want to be eating food that's grown here and cooked with care, that's all.
Now, Kathy, it's it's all about organics and eating locally at Gather, isn't it? It's Absolutely. really celebrating what's going on in our community. Yes, I mean, if you want to know where something came from that you're eating at, at Gather, they will know. And if they mm -hmm. don't know, they have this book that will tell you exactly where every ingredient came from. It's the most wonderful thing if you care about where your food's coming from and you care about what you put into your body. It's an incredible experience. It's kind of a binder of what the farms that come yeah. from, who's produced this. And right? they try and stay very local mm -hmm. in their food, their wine, their cocktails, everything that they serve. And you know what? It's not just about that though. The food is so incredibly amazingly creative mm -hmm. and um, the, the chef Sean Baker uses ingredients like nobody else. I, I mean I, I really truly am excited before I go there. What did you have when you went Mike? I went all squash. You went Appet all squash? <laughs> appetizer. <laughs> I thought and, you played and, football and not squash. <laughs> oh that too. Um, and uh, the, the appetizer was squash as was the, the entree um, and they were good. The food was very good. You could tell it was wholesome. You can tell it was uh, you know organically oriented and... and uh, did you have the pizza? With the squash? No. Oh, the pizza is so good. Is it? Yeah. Absolutely. Pizza. Pizza. I know you yeah. had yeah, pizza. Yeah, I had the pizza, and I was a little disappointed with the pizza. So I had the um, vegan spicy tomato pizza, and I thought the crust was phenomenal. It was like you know a perfect blend of crispiness and chewiness, um, but. Um, it was a spicy tomato pizza and it wasn't spicy and I thought the sauce was a little bit acidic um, and I thought the cashew cheese was a little runny and you know I've had vegan pizza before and I love pizza in general so just it just didn't live up to my pizza what standards. Oh. I'm just gonna say yeah no <laughs> jump in there. That's so interesting because I, I went recently with a girlfriend and she had that she took one bite she goes Oh my <laughs> God, this is so good. So, you know, yeah. she loved it. Absolutely loved that spicy tomato pizza. Right. Yeah. So I wish there was more spice. I think that was the main thing for me. I didn't feel the spice. And, you know, I love And what else did you guys spice. have? Um, I ordered a drink. <laughs> you, you, you know, you, 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 drink you, or you said, you. <laughs> you know, you said at Sapori, you know, go to the bar, not to the restaurant. And I would suggest the reverse over there because they brought out a margarita type drink that had no taste whatsoever mm. to it and kind of was on the borderline of dishwater, you know. Uh. That's and, and you should have had the beast. That was that was the only <laughs> you disappointment had the that I had. I liked the drinks. Yeah, yeah. I had a you specialty did? cocktail. Um, I it had tequila and mezcal, and I, I thought the drinks were excellent. Um, I really enjoyed the drinks. I really I had a vegan charcuterie. Yes. Um, really the highlight of the night for us. It was a new taste sensation. It was all vegan, so we prepared several ways. We had um, watermelon prepared several ways. So they had a prosciutto like watermelon and a watermelon foam. They had this um, porcini and mushroom puree that had like a slice of a dehydrated mushroom and it was like packed with flavor. And I felt like this sort of was approaching molecular gastronomy, which is a feel, like an area I've never eaten before. Right. So for me, that was a highlight, just having these new taste experiences. I kind of got off on the decor. Ah. You know, the, uh, the the seat there is made out of belts that are hooked together and the tables were from uh, bleachers from a high school. Right. Somewhere. All reclaimed and re yeah, right. reused. The, the, I like the, that the, 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 uh, yeah. the lamps were fishnets from Thailand. And, right. But the disappointment in that was that we had to ask the waitress about it. I mean, that, I would think that would be something you could put on the menu right. to tell you about the recycling attitude of the, of the whole place. Because they're very Maybe into they that, you know, that. putting, you yeah. know, vegan, you can tell which is vegan. Because I asked, so why is this called gather? And, and, and when I'm looking at the belts on the seat, and I said, does it have anything to do with putting a belt on and cinching yourself up? Is that yeah. what gather means? Or what? Yeah. Well, you know, in the I don't know, you're talking about fish that and gather and... <laughs> you know, this is your restaurant, Kathy. Wrap it up for oh, us. Oh, gosh. Okay. So gather is so much more than just a meal. It's an exciting sensory experience in taste, sight, and texture of the food. Um, when I go, I can't wait to go back, and I think most people feel that way. Okay, Mike. Uh, the food was good. I see this as a place more for the locals. Uh, I could see them catering to the Berkeley... Uh, clientele. Uh, traveling there just for the food would, would be a bit of a challenge and uh, I, I did enjoy it. If I was in the area I'd probably stop in and try it again. Okay and Suzanne? Um, I completely uh, support their mission statement so if I were in the neighborhood I'd go back and sit at the bar, have a drink and have the vegan charcuterie. All right, if you would like to try Gather, it's on Oxford at Alston Way in Berkeley. The telephone number is 510-809-0400. It's open every day for lunch and dinner with brunch on the weekends. Reservations are recommended, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $30.
Well, I have to thank my guests on this week's show. No fighting, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> Suzanne Angeli with a taste of Southern India at her pick of Dosa on Fillmore in San Francisco. Mike Di Maria taking us around Italy with the menu from Sapore Italiano Ristorante in Burlingame. And Kathy Curtis who brought everyone together for local ingredients at Gather in Berkeley. Don't forget that you can go to our website at kqed.org slash check please to add your comments on today's show. You'll find more details on all the restaurants featured and you can watch a segment or download a whole show. It's where you'll find my notes on the wines that we're tasting today and videos about wine. And if you really want to stay in touch you can find us on Facebook and Twitter. So don't forget to join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I hope to see you then. Cheers. 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 This show is available in high definition, Comcast On Demand, and via podcast. For additional information on the restaurants featured, to comment, or to apply to be on the show, go to our website at kqed.org slash checkplease. A KQED HD production.